transcribe it later. All right, so um, I guess I wanna ask you both this question. So starting with you, Miss Alexander, you have such a long history and you started in the industry at a really young age. So can you tell me a little bit about how that kind of transpired into social justice? Cause I know you're really involved with um, women's, women's movements and things like that, as well as um, the people of color uh, initiatives that yeah, you're sure. over. So can you tell me a little bit about how you transitioned into that role? So you're wondering how they mix yes. and they mix uh, really organically because it's all storytelling. Right. And in stories, you're often told untruths, stereotypes and things like that. And for many years, I was asked to play those roles. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not saying that they were untrue. Yes, I was a foster child. Yes, I played a prostitute. Yes, I played an enslaved person. But that's not who I was. And I didn't see many people my age being asked to do that except for black and brown people. And I wanted to be an ingenue. And they didn't exist. Right. They didn't exist until um, really until Halle Berry showed up and Nia Long and maybe Jada Pinkett. But up until that point, you had to be suffering or suf suffered or, um, an, or wait to be an authority figure, mm -hmm. made to grow older right. and then be a person who was comforting people or giving people advice or sending people to jail with you know, a stern right. look. Uh, that's um, not a life I wanted. So I thought maybe I could be a storyteller, but it took a long time to gain the discipline to be a writer. Mm -hmm. And um, in between that time, I realized that both my parents um, had raised me in a very interesting environment, but they were both um, people who worked in service of others. My father was a preacher, my mother was a social worker and a teacher. And so I think I have that in my DNA naturally. Mm -hmm. And um, I started to look for solutions, mm -hmm. not only for my life, but for my family's life. My father passed away early, so I helped my mother um, uh, keep the family together and, and, and raise her last children because I'm one of six. Mm -hmm. And um, it led me to politics, plus that being going to an all-girls high school. Okay. And an all-girls high school, we were told that we would meet mentors that we may never know, but we should mm -hmm. follow them, look at their blueprint. And one of them was Hillary Clinton, believe mm -hmm. it or not. And um, I was looking forward to meeting her. Somebody facilitated it. Next thing you know, I was working for her. Mm -hmm. She I sent me that. all over. I was a... Um, most traveled surrogate, but the thing that I think was the most valuable is that the people I met who worked and um, were around her, mm -hmm. like John Lewis, mm -hmm. um, Stacey Abrams, right. Diana Presley, they were all impressive people. They were all really um, no joke. So I had to get my act together. I had to start <laughs> learning uh, what they knew a little bit. Right. I wasn't expected to be who they were, mm -hmm. but I thought I could be helpful, and that's why I did it. But it came from being inside of storytelling but not having much agency. Right, okay. And what about you? What got you involved in social justice matters as far as, especially this film? <laughs> Probably this is, a big question. Is a, this is a, do I do like the simple answer or the complicated answer? Either one. Well, you know what? She looked like she down and ready for Yeah, I'm ready. He's chucking and jiving. Just get on with it. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, honestly, you know, I made, when I made my first film, I didn't set out to do this. I don't think anybody... Um, I don't think any sane white person would set out to like build their career um, like exploring race, especially the division between black and white Americans. And um, when I made my first film, I made a film about um, the, at the time I was like in advertising and I wanted to get into filmmaking and I saw this uh, event on TV, this news story about this man who had been chained to the back of a pickup truck in Jasper, Texas and dragged to death. This was in 1998. And I went down to the town and the experience, I went down just because I wanted to make a movie and, I, and honestly, I, want, I was like, I need, a, I need a new story and I need a crime. I and mean, that's the reality when you're trying to like, make a film people are interested in. But going down to Texas and driving down the road where um, James Burke was killed and you could, as you drive down, you would see all, they had all these like spray painted circles where they found his different body parts. And like you're driving and like you see one and then you see another and you see another and another one and on and on and right. on. And you could also see the mark still, so just a few days later, of his poor body because they dragged him until he completely um, you know, Capitated. They had hated him. And then you, then you saw a sort of imprint of his body on the ground. And that sort of moment really weirdly like shook me to my core and really tr sort of made me sort of reevaluate what I thought about my country, myself, 
the idea of what race relations even are. And when I, and in making that movie, I made it actually with a friend of mine, a black filmmaker named Mark Barbara Williams. And the experience of both being there through, through a year, making that film, mm -hmm. navigating how to tell the story across race with, mm -hmm. the, with my, my, my partner, so profoundly changed me, it kind of set me off on this path. And right. uh, you know, here I am, you know, 25 years later. <laughs> that's great. And so yeah, so that's yeah. really yeah, it was really sort of a moment of, yeah. of of awakening. And then I actually really felt when I had that feeling at the at the at the end of Huff Creek Road, I sort of I had this like instinct that if I could communicate what I was feeling in that moment to a large number of people, and I didn't even know what that meant, mm -hmm. then I would have done something of value. So right, yeah. That's important, for sure. Um, so, I don't want to keep you too long. <laughs> I know it's about to um, come up on time, okay. but I know that um, in the movie, which I watched, which was great. Um, Thank Miss, Yeah, of course, Miss Simmons, um, she kind of had different reactions. There were some people who were like, yes, this is a step towards reparations, and then others were like, this isn't enough. So, is that kind of the motivation behind these talks, is to kind of see everyone's point of view on what reparations looks like? Uh, can you give me a little bit more insight into why it's so important to do this on top of the film? Discussion, Either of you. Yeah. talk, conversation, debate is a natural thing. That's how people get to solutions. Also, how people get educated learn why, why it's important for them, their community, themselves, how they fit into history, how history um, rolls out, continues to um, react and have action upon systems. Mm -hmm. um, so this is the perfect place to do it. Mm -hmm. what you say? Yeah, no, I think that, you know, we kind of like to think that our film is sort of this activator, right? Like it's this thing where I think that most Americans look at the idea of reparations or even the idea of healing the rift between black and white Americans as something that's all, so big it's almost impossible. Mm -hmm. How do we even begin that? And what we really love about the film is that the film shows this young woman who had never, you know, run for office, never been a politician, had no idea other than she wanted to take a step and make change in her own small neighborhood. Mm -hmm. uh, and then ultimately that lends, at, you know, it leads to the reparations program, it leads to this thing, and actually then it leads to this national movement of global reparations where we're seeing it spring up all over. And we really feel like for this generation to see who so much of the time, mm -hmm. I know because I have kids this age, mm -hmm. that they don't see the possibility. The world mm -hmm. seems so tied up in knots. Mm -hmm. And we like to think that this film will, is a way to sort of activate people and say, yes, you can take the first step and make change. But I think especially, we say why here, you know, there's not, we don't have much road left between us. I vote less than Erica, you know, and this next generation is the one that's going to have to make the change. So this, this, you know, the idea to inspire uh, the next generation to actually start moving towards a more just country mm -hmm. is what our goal is. Yeah, so um, my last question, since you have someone waiting for you. Um, so you talked about taking a step. So what is the next step, in your opinion? I know that's a big question, but obviously this is the first step, having the conversation. What can you do, um, what would you say to these students who maybe are feeling maybe a little bit hopeless, seeing you know things that are happening in the world, in their community? Um, what would you say to them to kind of encourage them? Because I know you, you have done a number of films on council people and um, elected officials who are making great change. So what would you say? say uh, to those students, whoever wants to go first. <laughs> I'll go first, yeah, yeah um, of course. if you want. Um, um, this is your leg of the race. Uh, this is what it is. Imagine how hopeless the enslaved people felt when they got off that boat. Imagine how hopeless everyone felt, the civil rights, the abolitionists. But they kept moving, they kept, they did the Underground Railroad, they did Civil War, they discussed these things, then we went backwards, things like that, back and forth, that's how it goes. So what I'd like to say is um, Bishop Barbara, who is one of my mentors, says that this is the third reconstruction. Uh -huh. And that if this is, then we can have an opportunity to be architects of the third reconstruction. Uh -huh. And that's really exciting as far as I'm concerned. So get excited. There's something very fascinating going on around you. It's not just all the bad things. There's an opportunity to build America the way it should have been from the ground up. And we're hoping that people get educated and see as Whitney says, um, 
promote the idea that they themselves have agency to do something wonderful or great. And they should see themselves as the new Martin Luther Kings, the new uh, leaders inside of a world movement, a global movement for uh, justice and restitution. That's great. Anything to add? Yeah, I would say, every, co-sign everything Erica said, mm -hmm. but also I would say start right here. Yes. This is where, you know, start where you are and um, don't wait for permission to start. Do not wait for permission. If you see you want something, I mean, I really believe that like people are desperate for leaders, desperate for people with ideas, commitment, and passion. And you know, there's you don't have to wait till like you have some powerful position. You don't have to wait anything. That you take that first step, and you don't know where the journey will take you. And other things that if you go, to our, and I think I don't know if you have our website. Mm -hmm. It's a, you know bigpaybackmovie.com, mm -hmm. and also Robin's website, firstrepair.org. We have a lot of tools on that. We have a study guide with a film. We have a toolkit for people who are trying to start their own exploration and reparations of their community. There's lots of different tools and resources and histories and you know case studies, so that if people are interested, they could. That's you know. Of course, watch the film but yes. then, and share it mm -hmm. with people, but then also you can go to the website and get Also, it. there's an executive order they're asking mm -hmm. uh, President Biden to sign mm -hmm. to get H.R. 40, which is partly what the film is about, H.R. 40, um, which is a bill to study reparations in Congress, move it along at a committee and into um, into a, a space where it can actually you know, be acted on. So we're also doing that here. Uh, if for anyone who wants to sign a postcard and send it to Biden, they can go to the Ben and Jerry's um, uh, hookup and, and we have it. But everyone should just write the uh, Congress and say, uh, sign, please, or the White House, mm -hmm. and sign uh, uh, um, 40. H.R. 40. Like, Executive order, President we also, Biden. We shouldn't forget to mention Ben and Jerry's. Yeah. Like this, oh, my gosh. This tour would not be possible. Yeah, I know supporting. they have such a big history yeah. of yeah. activism. Huge so. history. A huge history, and they're one of the, they're, I think, the only ma big mainstream publicly traded company that has gone all in on this idea That's of reparations great. and healing. So we're really so excited to be partnering with them. And they've been a great Yeah, partner. they've been a really great partner. Yes. And, uh, yeah, and thanks, going. thanks uh, for taking this on. Mm -hmm. um, we know that it's important to do, but not many people want to do it. And so we're really excited that we're here at the university doing this. Awesome. Well, I think it's 15 seconds.